this time once again to put the stock martins up in the closet and it's time once again to file away the agnostic front seven inch it's time to erase all the strange voices of my answering machine cause my mother telephoned and she's coming down for a couple of days God knows I wouldn't want to upset her or make her cry But when I was 18 I tried to tell her that this burning for music would never die But she wouldn't listen My mother does not know I am a punk rocker She has no idea of the music I make or the life I lead All the girls I date, my mother does not know I am a punk rocker. It is so far removed from her world, she will never ever know. She used to approve until I got beat up by a gang of kids. Then I ruined my credit, went into debt, much to my chagrin. When I look into my life, I can't hardly blame her It looks like a wreck, but it's my beautiful wreck It's what I love to do It's the only thing that matters in my plan unsalted life My mother, she thinks I'm a yuppie Who wants a house full of kids and a BMW With all the money I spent on records and fanzines I could have bought two BMWs My mother does not know I I'm a punk rocker She has no idea Of the music I make Or the life I lead Or the chances I take My mother does not know I am a punk rocker It is so far removed from her world She will never ever know In my house I listen to the Mead Men and the Nick Heist too And in my car I worship Naked Reagan, Operation Ivy And the night that I made love to you In my mind I will always wonder about Ray of today And what he's wearing on stage But at my mom's house I talk about work and what I had for lunch And that's okay, no one knows everything about me Life leaves me puzzled, life leaves me puzzled, life leaves me puzzled, life leaves me puzzled, this burning in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. Life leaves me puzzled, I'm glad my lover that you know I am a punk rocker. It makes me happy, the tears of joy I cry, it's the only way I wanna live until. Jersey Beach Video Fantasy, Volume 1. Your butt. 
when you're feeling down and out There is nothing better than taking off your clothes It's a real attention getter songs, including some some catchy sing-along covers from yesteryear, other bands. What, what's your goofiest song?
video snack making special extravaganza. I'm Adam. And I'm Chuck. And this is the Snack Master. <laughs> a new space age device explicitly for preparing snacks as Bedlamauer does on stage each and every performance. Now we'll go through a list of features of the Snack Master that make it an innovation in the snack making world. First off, there is the incredible Space Age Polymer DuPont Teflon Coating. This prevents the snacks from getting messy or causing you any difficulty whatsoever. And if you'll notice, upon close examination, the wonderfully deep fluted pockets for delicious accommodation of lots of wonderful snack Filling. That, that's very important, don't you think so, Chuck? I think everyone in the United States, as well as around the world, has always enjoyed delicious snacks. This is just a much more convenient way to prepare them in half the time. In half the time. That is true in this jet, jet set wild world that we live in, let me tell you. Let me go on with some of the features listed here on the Snack Master. Notice the high tensile strength hinges to create the maximum pressure needed to create the Snack Master snack. And of course, with that pressure comes, well, responsibility. This, of course, is a UL listed product. Now, as we bring the Snack Master down into its Snack Master configuration, you'll notice that there's a lock. That lock assures the safety of you and your entire family and creates the optimal pressure for the snack making process. We open it back up and expose the Snack Master's insides. Notice that all cords are tidily put away there for your maximum safety. Remember, UL listing is standard on the Snack Master. Chuck, what about cleanup? Well, you know the Snack Master is so doggone convenient and easy to use that you would think you might have a catch somewhere as far as cleaning and storage of the Snack Master. <laughs> well, no. It's very, very simple. Adam, if you can believe it, all you need is one damp sponge. Damp sponge. Who would have guessed it, huh? Just gently wipe out the Snack Master after each and every use with a small damp sponge. Close it, unplug it, and store it safely in the cabinet away from your children or other members of the family who might hurt themselves by using such a product. Indeed. Uh, indeed, it is completely safe when used. A self-contained snack master unit. It's really amazing. Indeed it is. I'll tell you what, Chuck. Why don't we get back to the snack master after watching these cool videos?
Master Test Kitchens here with Bedlam Hour, Chuck and Adam. I'll tell you what, Chuck, you know we're at the juncture in our program where we need to actually prepare the ingredients for use in the Snack Master. And I'll tell you what, remember that delicious apple? Well, we have it cut up in segments. But, you, have, but, you know, Chuck, it would be kind of hard to make snacks with the apples in this state of uh, readiness. Wouldn't you agree, Chuck? Well, the Snack Master could be completely closed, and that would cause some problems in Indeed. the preparation. So we have to prepare the apples for the Snack Master. And, well, being that we're uh, the hardcore punk rock uh, icons of the South, we have to prepare these. Now, the method of preparation is very suited for the punk rock lifestyle that Chuck and I lead on a daily basis here in South Carolina. One of the important tools is, of course, the standard Doc Martin size of what? Ten and a half? Size eight and a half. Size eight and a half boot. Let me illustrate. Chuck, if you would. Now, notice the deep grooves in the Doc Martin air walk sole. Very important. This establishes a perfect crushing surface for the apples, as you will see. Chuck, with your assistance, we'll set the apples down in the towel here for preparation. Now, be sure to cut them up into, what, eights? I guess we have about eight pieces here. Chuck, if you could step back one minute, please. Why, certainly. See, we'll bring the towel over so as not to damage the meat of the fruit too terribly much there, and keep things hygienically uh, considered. Now, one moment while I prepare here. Chuck, if you would assume the uh, mosh position, and, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and get a mosh beat ready here. That's it. Fists clenched, of course. You know, for thousands of years, uh, food preparation has been a ritualistic event uh, in the Old Testament. The Jewish culture actually uh, ritualized the eating and uh, preparation of food, as well as many African cultures. This is just a 20th century. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of analogies have been drawn to the mosh pit and ancient tribal uh, rites of years past. So, well, without any further ado, let's prepare those snacks. Spoken word with Johnny Puke from uh, Stinky Finger. Stink Finger? Out of uh, Virginia. And let's see what else do I have. That same show at ABC No Rio, 9 p.m. Wednesday night also. Thank you. She glides through the boneyard like a death rocker babe when Lily Munster meets Stevie Nicks. It's bad luck to walk on a grave, you know, so her spiked heels dig deep in the dirt alongside the dead dudes. She's a little nearsighted, so as she avoids superstitiously trotting on the larger headstones, she trips over the smaller ones, the children and the poor. The autumn breezes blow and oak leaves are flying around and some get caught in her greasy black hair. She finally reaches her destination. It's one of those statue headstones, a kneeling angel with wings outstretched. It could have been a gargoyle if you saw it from behind. She kneels in front of the headstone, her fishnet stockings stretching tight, making her legs look like one of those Danish hams with a rope on them. She thinks about the circumstances, the gossip, and the talk. Vultures never gather over the living, she thinks to herself. She's been coming here for about two years now. It's become pretty obvious she's the only one who ever visits this grave. She doesn't know who it is that lies below in the cold autumn soil and doesn't really care. William Hillard Miller died 1891. 
for her, he's become a symbol of uh, what she grieves for and those that she should have grieved for. These twilight visits are her catharsis. After a while, she rises slowly and walks away, thinking about the phone solicitor who interrupted her dinner last week trying to sell her a burial plot. She couldn't afford it if she wanted to, and she ponders what happens to her if she died tonight. Where would be her resting place for her bony, tired, world-worn frame? Where do they bury those that can't afford burial? It's best not to think about it, she says to herself, and she tells herself this and walks away slowly into the foggy night. Best not to think about it. They're probably all at the bottom of the East River. Man, headstrong. Cool. Watch out. Check it out. Headstrong. Masterpiece of the 90s. And uh, we got a loose set of this coming out too. It's going to be just as awesome, but I don't know what it's called yet. So. All right, this one's uh, our newest song. And it's, uh, I like your butt. Yeah, it's called I Like This is written by Paul over here, so. Oh. You know, it's a real. Uh, hard Paul, everybody. Paul oh, Slothead. It's written by the Slothead. Remember, 
Oh, well, this is a uh, space-age nonstick surface. We do like to augment it a bit to help add to the flavor. We do have the all-natural no preservative PAM. And for the environmental set there, remember, PAM doesn't use any uh, fluorocarbons. No CHCs in PAM. CFCs, I think it is. Oh, certainly. CFC. Well, anyhow, let's spray it. And this also aids in crystallizing and caramelizing the outside of the uh, snacks, which is uh, quite important. And here we go. Our first delicious slice of piggly wiggly bread. And here are those lovely apples that Chuck uh, helped prepare right here and ready to go into the snack master. Boy, doesn't this look succulent. <coughs> oh yeah, and remember, the snack master has these deep well pockets you can really heap on those delicious fillings. No skimping there, Adam. No skimping, now with these delicious Macintosh apples. And then also what you need to do is place that slice of bread neatly over there. Now on the other side, remember it does have two sides. We can make some delicious cornbread just like oh, and that's gonna our grandmothers used to make. Delicious. We have the cornbread mix already looking very succulent, I might add. Mmm. You know, some people call it maize. Here we go. Let's just dab that in. Ooh, listen to that sizzle. Does that smell good or what, Chuck? It smells absolutely fantastic. And you know, the beautiful thing is, for those uh, of you out there who have uh, children, you know, children are always so picky. And some might like different snacks than the other kids in the family. That's well, right. you can kill two birds with one stone with the Snack Master. We have them for simultaneously. The, for the cornbread kid right over here, and for the uh, apple pie boy, child. we're all set to go. Mm -hmm. And now we'll go ahead and close. Snack Master right here. Don't forget to lock it. And you lock it up securely. You just need to press it down just ever so much more. Now they're locked in and cooking right as we speak. But a lot of people are concerned with, well, gee whiz, how long does a Snack Master snack take? Well, only minutes. You know about the uh, duration of the average uh, hardcore Bedlam. punk rock Bedlam Hour song. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to perform the Frankenberry Watch for all you folks out there. Get it, Chuck! 
about this cornbread? Looking so good, so crunchy. Look at that. Mm. And let's not forget the delicious apple turnover. Well, that's my personal favorite, Adam. I always <laughs> love those apple turnovers. Now, let me warn you kids out there that, of course, these are hot, fresh, and delicious snacks. But the core temperature of this apple turnover will exceed that of the surface of the sun. So please, when biting into these, do be careful. But I'll tell you what, Chuck, we've worked kind of hard this segment. I think it's time to take, take or put our feet up, watch a couple of videos, and return and enjoy our delicious snacks. And we'll do just that in just a minute. See you in a minute.
singing, I took out the All, all album, uh, or rather the Sentence album All, and just learned all the lyrics to that. So I guess Milo's a big influence. And uh, Rodham Sander, I really like. Meyer. Uh, I love Aerosmith, so I kind of try to emulate that in uh, different ways. I like solo music. So I guess it's kind of a mouth of that stuff. When we first started out, um, like on the first uh, the first demo we did, the songs were basically Paul writing the you know the guitar lines and the basses and me doing the melody lines. And at that time, uh, I guess the songs Paul, Paul was writing were more kind of in the replacement vein. But my, my influences really came from a different place, really. And, uh, and so I write um, songs that are really, I mean, I'm definitely influenced by the replacements very much. But um, my songs now have more of my influence, and Paul also has been writing in a lot of different styles now. So I think, I think we're definitely kind of uh, moving away from that a bit. I really don't think we sound that much like the replacements anymore. But I guess that's debatable. We're definitely big influence, but I think we've kind of, we're kind of, uh, you know, we play real heavy songs, and, uh, I think that the comparison is really too valid. I guess we definitely are rooted in that Husker Du to, so I guess we sound a little bit like them, but I don't think uh, we're a carbon copy. I think we have a lot of, uh, they're kind of original these days, actually. I don't really hear that many bands sounding like us.
doing? And here we are sitting down to a sumptuous snack meal with my friends Chuck and Kenneth Dara, cinematographer for the evening. And boy, do we have it lucky here. We have the full meal of the uh, Frankenberry with skim milk from watching our fat and cholesterol intake. And uh, of course, the Little Debbie uh, Star Crunch and the highlight, Snack Master. So what do you think, Chuck? I'm just so thrilled about this. You know, acting is uh, no easy business. It's almost as hard as being a punk rock star. Mmm. Well, kind of, what's your opinion of these delicious snacks? I think these snacks look tasty. I hope you won't mind if I tear one of these open and show this audience at home just how glistening and delectable oh, these oh, apple oh, turnovers oh, are. Oh, God. If you would, zoom in on these. Pretty as a picture. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. We do want the people at home to see how delicious this fruit is going to be. And after a suitable time has elapsed, as mourned by Adam earlier, these are not hot and are safe to handle. And to just go ahead and bite into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. Well, guys, what say we get into the uh, business of eating, huh? Ah, sounds good. Well, it's been great spending time with you folks. Uh, you uh, take it all, y'all. All right. And. Uh, it's easy. Yeah, we'll see you next summer on tour, and you can have all these snacks with us every night at any Bevel Hour show. Thanks for joining us in our test kitchen today. Peace. Love. Ah. Oh. Ooh, this is going to be hard. Man. It's going to be just us. Oh, we're in the church for now. I think Garden Angel. Angel. Uh, say. Garden Angel. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Spell Guardian. G A G U. G A U. Listen, both or spell oh. G A U. Guardian not. That's the way I thought it was. G A. Guardian Devil, we call it in this church. Get in my ass! <laughs>
quick safety gear, hit it, Sue.
live as opposed to sequenced over here. Um, usually playing basic simple riffs like uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
different when we play live now, isn't it?
disengage. It's called Helpless. I think I went to the bathroom like five times like sound check. They were yelling at me. I was only in the band for a week when we played that show. So yeah, me too. Me and Mark were only in the band for a week. Uh, yeah, we tried to say stuff. Such a blast. The music's very important, uh, but the lyrics like lately have been... Uh, I don't know. More of a message. Uh, we have an animal rights song called Helpless. And uh, we have a song about... Uh, We have a brand new song called Emulate, and I like it a lot. Keith wrote the lyrics. Uh, it's, it's kind of about how, like, uh, some people, like, guys, like, they, they try to live up to this, like, super macho image that, you know, other people display, and, like, they, they try to, they, they think that, like, you know, being being a man or something, that's some kind of competition, or you have to, you have to live up to some sort of macho image. And it's just, uh, it's bullshit. I, I, yeah, yeah, I call bullshit on that. But I noticed that, um, in New York, you have to be like some kind of like hardcore superstar to gain any recognition from like anybody there. Like, um, I was up in the dressing room and like there was like everybody from like Jimmy Gestapo and like Don Fury and everything. And like no one even like takes a second to even say hi to you or anything. You got to be like some. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You? Yeah. Personally, yeah. personally, yeah. I dislike New York City. Not not the people in it, but the city. I think it's scummy. It's really dirty. And dirty. I liked it. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't like. I mean, like, I I was still expecting like, like people to be like rude, like with no manners and stuff. But like, I meant like like there's a lot of people like they like my hat got knocked off. And they picked it up for me and stuff. Like like a lot. I thought a lot of people are really nice and uh, it's a good show. You know, the city. You know, like the city's kind of dirty. But I'm glad I went there anyway. You know, I'm glad I went. Yeah, it was good. Well, I go back. Get, 
Connecticut. Connecticut. Was very Connecticut. Awesome. We stayed at a castle. In we stayed with that kid right there. <laughs> Who's this kid? That kid this is great. He played for third degree. Too bad you'll never ever hear anything by him because no one will ever get out of the out of Boston. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. To continue on that question, what, why do you guys? Is there anything you'd like to say about Boston? Why it's good or if it's bad? I don't. I don't think. Yeah. I don't. There's nothing I really dislike about the Boston yeah. scene. It's not very. Shows aren't very violent. Like. Although Alyssa Blowing Chunks likes to say that it's pretty violent, it really isn't. She's got this, like, I don't know. Uh-huh. But I think, well, like, at the at the show in New York, uh, somebody had said something about, uh, like, they, they, they heard they were really violent in Boston. I don't think it's that violent. I, I, like, I think, like, this kind of, like, a, a Boston has some sort of reputation for being violent. And uh, I don't think that, as far as the question about like Boston and New York, uh, I don't think that there should be like some sort of competition or anything. Like, oh, I like Boston. I want to get this on video. Worth it is going up to Alan Schritt's brother, too. Alan Schritt's brother, Alan Schritt's brother, Alan Schritt's brother, Alan Schritt's brother, Alan
This next song is our last song. Job out seven the thing coming up next. This, this is called Humble. Let's play. Hands in your pocket 